So here's a view from our hotel right here. That is a nice view. You can see the um, the reservoir right here, the river going right through the middle like this and all the all the freaking mountains this way in the rain. But yeah, looks like Guilin, right? Guilin Yang Shui area, but this this town's a lot lot smaller. That looks to be a sports stadium of some kind. Right there, probably basketball. It's always basketball here in China. So, yeah. The hotel room is is nice though. This is uh it's 194 yuan a night. So like, I don't know, $25 something like that, 25 US dollars. It's a good It's a good deal. It's a good deal. It's got a gym, it's got a Chinese and Western restaurant, stuff like that. It's all right. We're at this Zhuang Minority restaurant and they've got more of that sweet tea. So I've had it twice in a row, actually. But yeah, you'll see like the waitresses, they're all wearing the traditional like Zhuang clothes and stuff like that, the, the minority clothes. And there's more of those little, little balls there. So I guess those are from the Zhuang Minority. Let's stop the video here and let's talk about these little balls right here. These embroidered silk balls. They, I mean, they look really cool. They're, they're beautiful. They're, they're, they're filled with sawdust. They're pretty, pretty solid, but also very light. And they're decorated with all kinds of little things, stars and birds and trees and this kind of thing. So originally these were used as like weapons of war. They were like made of bronze and, and all kinds of other metals. And they, you know, I imagine they would do some damage if you got knocked in the dome with that. But then the fascinating thing was it became a sort of part of the culture and it sort of shifted into the opposite of war. They became kind of tokens of love. So the drunk minority people would gather around and men and women would be split into different groups. And the women would see a man that they liked and they would take the balls and they would throw them to this man and the man would catch them. I guess if he liked the woman and if he liked the woman, he would attach a little gift to the, to the ball, I guess, via this string or something or other, and then throw it back. And if the woman accepted the gift, then it means she had agreed to a date. And this is, it, it kind of died out during the cultural revolution. And then it's been making a, a comeback in terms of tourism and trying to uh, preserve the local culture. So it's fascinating. You see these all over Guangxi, everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. So anyway, back to the video. There is a pagoda on top of this mountain. Look at that. How in the heck do you get up there? That is a straight shot up. You must have airdrop people in and airdrop materials in because nobody's climbing up there. Here we are, Tongling Canyon. This is, I mean, this place looks beautiful. There's a cave, there's, of course, you know, the canyon itself, you can look down. Uh, there's a bend in the river around some mountains. And uh, yeah, here's a quick map of the park you can see right here. It's quite a big area, quite a big area. And yeah, it's, it's built up, very developed. There's already a bunch of tour buses here. We'll just have to see, but yeah, there's the cave right there. And uh, with the cliff coffin burial, so they might have hanging coffins, who knows? Hidden in gold cave, and yeah, it just follows the river all the way along. And there you go, ending with the waterfalls right there. So, yeah, let's get in. 
And the fog is increasing. Visibility is decreasing. Yeah, can't see too much. Get into like rainforest kind of kind of stuff. Oh, look at that. Wonder what that is. Hmm. Coming up on our first tour group. Now these people are what makes traveling here a headache. They're because yeah, they come with speakers or megaphones. Well, these aren't the worst because they're not wearing matching clothing. But yeah, it's uh oh, they're so annoying. Yeah, because for some reason, I mean, Chinese people just don't like traveling alone. They would rather, like, travel with, like, 20 other people, all wearing the same thing, guided by a megaphone. They, they just don't understand how to travel alone. They don't want to. They don't want to make their own decisions. They, um, they would rather someone else make all the decisions for them. They would rather someone else, you know figure everything out because they just think it's easier and they think it's better but it's not ah and it just it makes everything worse my piece of advice for you is no matter what the difference in cost is no matter how difficult it might be always travel independently never ever 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 travel in one of those groups because then Somehow the mood of the of the place, the ambiance, is ruined by lots of like metal shacks and huts put up just in the middle of the path to sell. That's that's typical Chinese tourism, you know. Immediately before you enter a park, there's going to be a little village like this selling tourist stuff, and then when you get in the park, especially if it's a big park. There will be another little village selling the same stuff. That's that's how it goes here. You know, it's how the money's made. This country has such amazing places. Places that are just simply unbelievable. Places that are stunning. Places that you can hardly believe even exist. But then when you actually get to them and see what's around these places, it just makes you kind of sad because they've just become money bags, you know? Uh... Holy crap, look at this. That thing is massive. Man. Hope it turns out well on the on the camera. Can't see all that well, but that's majestic. Oh man, you can feel the water coming off this thing. Not just, I mean, there's wind blowing. It's not just a mist. I mean, that's that is just water coming straight off the wall. I can't even see, man. My, my glasses are so, so messed up. <laughs> I, have to, I have to keep doing this. You know, look under my glass, because I can't, I can't see anything. <laughs>
But apparently this is actually Sandia Ling. So like the three folds, the triple fold waterfall. And oh geez, yeah, the water's just coming, coming right off the right there. It's right by the side of the highway. Dang. Just like, it just keeps spreading. I guess that's why they call it the triple fold because it's here, here, and here. It's amazing. But yeah, the, it's funny. You can see the expressway there. You've got this provincial road right here, tunnels and all of that. And then this gorgeous waterfall right here beside it.